All right, it is Reset Sunday. What's up, what's up? Y'all know what we do on Sundays, we reset. And today what we're going to cover is how to time out our meals. One thing that I'm noticing a lot is that we're not hitting our required amount of calories, whether we're working out or not, we're just not hitting them. And a lot of times is um, it's a timing issue. We don't understand when we should start eating, for our lifestyle, for our body type, all that good stuff. And uh, more importantly, your lifestyle. You just don't know when to start eating. And you're like, oh, well, I, that's too much food in a meal. So you're dealing with a lot of psychological battles and stuff like that of when you should be eating, when you should not be eating. So that is what we're going to bring clarity to today. So I hope you have your pen. I hope you have your pad. Definitely, if you have any type of questions or anything, feel free to come off mute and say, hey, I'm not quite understanding something. So um, I know over the past week, we always start with, okay, what type of goal are we going to set this week? And so I'm going to ask you that at the beginning of this session. I'm also going to cover that again at the end of this session in regards to your goals, goal setting. So with last week's goal, who hit, and you can use the chat if you need to, but who hit their goals from last week? Who hit their goals? And even if you didn't hit your goals, um, you can private message me and say, hey, I didn't hit my goal, but I was definitely close to it or I was super far-fetched. So did anybody hit their goal? Anybody, anybody, whatever it was. I know a lot of us set a goal. All right, Chandra, yes, you did, fantastic. I know a lot of us, um, we set a goal of making sure that we're tracking more. So it was good. And we even talked a little bit more about being realistic with your goal setting. Like how should you set your goals? What exactly should you be setting for yourself? Sometimes these goals are not always weight related, but what they do by, you know, making these smaller goals or setting smaller goals, what it does is it does make you hit that larger goal. If it's, hey, I want to drop 0.5 pounds in body fat this week. Okay, cool. Sometimes it's not the matter of working out harder or working out more or whatever. Um, and it might not even be eating less. It might just be something as simple as, hey, make sure you're hitting your water goal. Or it might be something as simple as, okay, make sure you hit your protein goal. Are you eating enough protein? Are you not eating enough? Are you overeating? Whatever. So start getting a little bit more defined with your goals. And I promise you, I promise you, promise you, promise you, you will hit those larger goals when you start focus, focusing on the smaller goals. So Miss T, I see you hit your water goal. That's awesome. Yes, Shamika lost two pounds and did tracking all within a week. That's good, Shamika. That's really, really good. Terry hit Monday and Wednesday goals. Fantastic. Ellen, yes, drank more water or Pilates classes. I love to see it. Love to see it. Yes. So what I want us all to do is to go ahead and set whatever goal it is that we're going to set for this week. If you did not hit your goals last week, maybe you need to say, hey, what did I not do? Maybe that was too aggressive for me. Let me be a little bit more De detailed with it. Okay. So for instance, if water, I know water is something that we talked about. If you're like, yeah, I just can't seem to hit that gallon water on Tuesday for a gallon uh, Tuesdays. And I would ask you, well, what exactly are you, what are you hitting? You know, do you have a fourth of a gallon left? Do you have a half a gallon left? Whatever. Okay. What I would suggest for you to do is break that gallon down into day parts and stuff and just focus on, all right, I want to definitely get started a little bit earlier. Last week, I got started at, I don't know, eight o'clock and I, I was already up at six. Okay, well, then maybe you need to say, all right, by seven o'clock, I need to go ahead and be hitting that first goal of the day whenever it comes to my water. So something that's simple as starting sooner or um, going a little bit harder earlier in the day might help you reach that end goal at the end of that day. Just as an example, and if you need some help with um, trying to define where you need to be a little bit more defined with your goal setting, let me know for sure. But let's go ahead and get into what we're going to talk about today. Today, we are going to set our schedule. We're going to set our schedule. So I hope you have a notepad. I hope you have your pen. If you need to go grab those things, definitely go grab it. If you want to use your phone, your iPad or whatever, I would definitely say use what's going to be most realistic for your lifestyle. If you're someone who's always super duper busy and you forget 
to, I don't know, eat your food or whatever, whatnot, maybe setting an alarm in your phone would probably be best. If you are someone who is uh, not super busy, but you're someone who has to put the pen to the pad, you got to write it down for it to be real to you, then maybe you should say, okay, let me get my pen and pad out and let me write out what this goal is going to be, or let me write out what my schedule is going to be this week. So there's a couple of things I want you to be mindful of. And what I'm going to do is pull out my planner for this week. Okay. I have my planner for this week. My week is empty as of now. Um, but I want you to first think about whether you want to use your calendar view or whether you want to use a weekly view or whether you want to use your phone. What I want you to do first, whenever you're setting up the times, I want you to think about the days that you actually work out. And let me talk about why the times are so important whenever you're trying to goal set, lose weight, maintain, gain, whatever your goal is, timing is definitely essential. So it's important to consider the time because you don't want to ever allow your body to hit a point of starvation. The moment that your body goes into a starvation period, what it begins to do is begin, it depends for yourself. It is very defensive. It's like, nope, 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 nope. Let me go ahead and produce and provide the body what it needs because I say this every week, your body is made to survive. That's how God built our body. It's built to survive. It's not built to be snatched. It's not built to lose weight. It's not built to gain weight. It's not built for any of that. It is built to survive. That is it. Now, your timing comes into play because sometimes we have this lapse time, this big gap of time from when we eat one meal to when we eat another. And in that gap of time, sometimes we're getting headaches. Sometimes we lose in focus. We get aggravated, agitated, frustrated, whatever aid it is. That gap of time usually represents so much. Sometimes we get busy. There's a laundry list of things to do and we just forget about it. So the importance of staying consistent is so that you train your body the same way you train your muscles whenever you're doing repetitions with pressing or the same way you train your body whenever you're running or you're doing some type of cardio or you're trying to train your core whenever it comes to core strengthening or whatever, you have to train your body in regards to following some type of schedule. And not every day looks the same. Your schedule on Monday won't look like Tuesday, especially if you're following some type of workout regimen or if you're on BU program and you're doing it Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Saturday can't look like Tuesday because those are two completely different days. Not every day your work schedule is the same. Not every day, you know, you have to go to a class over here. Everything is different. Sometimes you might go out with a good girlfriend Y'all might have drinks or what have you. Every day looks different. So you cannot treat every day the same. So what we're going to do is plan out what these days need to look like based off what you have going on this week. And what I want you to get into the habit of doing is every single week, I want you to look back and say, okay, this works for me. I understand I had a super busy day, but I got around it because I had my alarm set. I knew what I was going to be eating. It's just another le level of preparedness. And that's all we're trying to do here. And this is also the beginning stages of building what your meal plan needs to look like for you, building your meal plan. So whenever it comes to eating, I want you to think about your entire week. And we'll start with tomorrow. Now, you already know, go ahead and write this out on your paper. Go ahead and um, prepare your notes in your phone. You know that you have, at the very, very least, if you're following my schedule, you have at least four workouts per week. You have a Monday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, and a Saturday workout with me. Now, you also have other workouts that you do as well. Sometimes you're doing homework. Sometimes you're doing other classes. I know, Ellen, you say you have your Pilates classes and stuff. Some of you guys are doing brick squad and you're in the park, whatever. You have your own schedule. Same thing with me. I got my own weight training classes that I do outside of this or whatever. So my schedule, your schedule, her schedule, everybody's schedule gonna look different. So what I want you to do right now is write down the day and the times that you actually work out. So for me, Monday, I'm going to go ahead and put, I know I have my 7.30 a.m. workout, right? I'm going to do the same thing for Wednesday. I know that I'm working out at 7.30 a.m. Thursday, I'm working out at 7.30 a.m. Okay, 
And for Saturday, I know that I'm working out at nine o'clock a.m. All right, so I have all of my workouts. Oops, excuse me real quick while I plug this up. I want you to continue to work out or write those times that you actually work out throughout the week. And what I want you to do next is write the time that you wake up, okay? Write the time that you normally wake up every single day. For those days, for those days in particular. So for Monday, I know that I'm up at 6 a.m., right? Wednesday, I'm up at 6 a.m. Thursday, 6 a.m. Saturday, um, it ranges between 7, 30 and 8, but I'm gonna put eight. I'm gonna be realistic with myself. Eight o'clock a.m. All right. So you have the times that you work out and you also have the times, uh-oh, sorry about that. You have the times that you work out and you also have the times that you wake up. Now, the first rule of thumb, my very, very first rule is this. Whenever you do wake up, whether it is Tuesday and you don't have a workout or anything like that, I'm so sorry, y'all. Whether you have a workout or not, you always want to eat within the very first hour of you being awake, okay? That is the very, very, very first rule. So I want you to look at the times that you wake up. And I want you to say, if I'm supposed to eat, the rule is, if I'm supposed to eat within an hour of me waking up, when is your first meal? And go ahead and write that down now. Okay. So that means my very first meal would happen around 7 a.m. for Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Saturday is a little bit different because even though it's within that first hour, I know that I'm working out at nine and I put that I wake up at eight. So the question would probably be, well, Reagan, do we eat right before we work out? And let me tell you, your second rule is you have about 30 minutes before your session in which you need to eat. So it's within an hour of you waking up, 30 minutes before your session begins. When is your first meal? When is your very first meal on your workout days? Someone can come off of the, um, if you wanna come off mute and ask any questions that you have, by all means, please do so. But that is the rule. So let me give you my example. Monday, I'm waking up at six. I know that I have a workout at 7.30. And I know I need to eat at least seven, I mean, 30 minutes before my first meal. That means, or my first workout, that means I'm eating anywhere between 6.45 and 7 a.m. Some people might say, oh, I can't do that. I can't put anything on my stomach before I work out. If you're one of those people, go ahead and drop a two in the chat. A two in the chat. If you're one of those people who are like, listen, I can't eat something the, the very first moment that I wake up, I can't do it. It does not work for me. I don't like it. It makes me feel sick. It does whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. And I'm sure the list goes on and on and on. For a lot of us, we just don't like eating. We're not accustomed to doing so. So we forego eating meals. In turn, you got to think about the day before you haven't eaten, you know, say you had your last meal at eight o'clock. That was your dinner. Then on top of that, you're waking up a couple hours later so that you can do a workout. And then you go through this whole fasted workout and then you're like, all right, let's eat. But you didn't even give your body, you didn't even break your fast before you went into this workout. So now your body is going off of what? The fumes it created last night, it doesn't have anything to give you so that it can give you something to burn off while you're working out. You get what I'm saying? So that is why I would always say break your fast first. That is my golden rule. Break your fast. Now you might say, well, what does that need to look like? You know, if I'm breaking my fast, I don't really like eating anything like that as it is in the morning. What should I do? Now y'all know we do our protein shake on Thursdays, right? Right. We have our protein shakes on Thursdays. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. 
But a shake does count as a meal. I'm not expecting for you to eat a big meal by the first time that you wake up, but you do want to start easing into something, maybe having a couple of berries, maybe having a, having a handful of grapes, maybe a half of a piece of toast or something to get your body going. The same way that I want you to drink some water as soon as your feet hit the floor. Now I told you guys that before, we're going to start drinking your water. You want to have a little something a little something, and we'll go deeper into that, but let's still focus on the times. So you have your time that you wake up, you know that you're supposed to eat within an hour of the day of you waking up. Um, and you also know that you're supposed to eat something within 30 minutes of you doing your workout. So let's go ahead and fill out those days that we don't have a workout or we're not working out. For me, that looks like Tuesday and that's Friday and that's Sunday. So I know what times that I wake up on Tuesday. Go ahead and write what times that you actually wake up on uh, the other days that you actually don't have a workout in the morning. So if you're getting up, you're waking up in time for your first meeting, that same requirement is there for you to go ahead and break your fast ahead of time. Go ahead and break your fast. The rules still remain the same eat within an hour of you waking up. So I'm writing down the times that I wake up on Tuesdays, writing down the time that I'm waking up on Friday, same thing on Sunday. And you can look, your days are not the same, right? Every day does not look the same. So you can't pull out just this random uh, one size fits all meal plan, expect to eat whatever is on this meal plan and get the results that you're looking for, your body's going to go backwards because it's not custom to what you need. Okay. So anyway, you have your times that you wake up for every day, go ahead for those days that you're not working out in the morning, Go ahead and write down the very first meal or the time frame when you should have your very first meal of the day. So if I wrote down on Tuesdays, I'm waking up at 9 a.m., I know that I need to have something. For me, I'm eating at 9.30 a.m. That's just the way that I'm rolling. But you know that you have within an hour. So let's talk about how many meals you should consume within a day, because that's a lot of questions that I do get. And this is going to go back to the time. So sometimes, you know, if I'm talking to you guys, I'm like, yeah, you should be eating about four to five meals per day. Y'all like, now what now? I can't eat all that. That's too much. I'm going to gain all this weight and I'm going to get huge and I'm going to blow up like a balloon. And I'm like, no, that, that's actually not true at all. <laughs> it's actually not true. You're not going to blow up at all. If anything, you're probably going to burn. So because you're not overeating at every meal, you guys. So you're definitely not going to get bigger or larger by eating more. It just, it's not. More of the wrong things, maybe so, but more consistently of the right things, no, that's not going to happen. So anyway, you have, let's see, if you have an hour by the time your feet hit the floor, that's when your clock begins. So I'm going to take mine back to Monday. I wake up at six. My clock begins ticking at six o'clock. I know that I need to have my very first meal by seven o'clock. I know that I'm working at 7.30, okay? I want you to look at from that very first moment that you had that very first meal. Whatever your Monday looks like, you're only focusing on your Monday. If you had your first meal at whatever that time is, what I want you to start doing is think. There's two things. If you're very active, if you're extremely active, you need to be eating anywhere from every two to three hours max every two to three hours every two to three hours okay if you're not as active or you have some days that you're not super active say Tuesdays are a light day for you Tuesday definitely needs to look a little different from Monday but if you're not very active what that looks like is every three hours you need to be consuming something three to about four max you need to have something to eat Okay. And this will vary. This will definitely vary. So on days that you're not super active, if you're supposed to be eating every three to four hours, of course, you're not going to have as many meals as you would if you were um, outside on a day that you're active, excuse me, and you're going to have to eat a little bit more. So my Mondays, because I'm active, I'm going to have to eat every two to three hours. On Tuesdays, because I'm not so active, I'm going to be eating around every three to four hours, okay? 
and give or take. Because sometimes on Tuesdays, I'm running errands, I'm in and out the house. So that three to four might look like two and a half to three. Okay. Or it might just be a solid three hours. I know every three hours I need to eat something. So it just depends on the level of activity. So right now, again, active days, every two to three hours, not so active days, every three to four hours. Makes sense. Cool. Drop a one in the chat. If that makes sense, drop a one in the chat. If that makes sense, if you understand that on active days, super active days, you need to be eating every two to three hours. And on not so active days, you need to be eating every three to four hours, put a one in the chat. And if you have questions as to why, definitely come off mute and say, well, Reagan, why? Y'all know it's all about the why, it's all about the why, it's all about the why. Okay, so you have that down. You already know if you're on every two to three hours for super active days, what I want you to do right now for those super active days, go through and make it make sense. So example, I already know that I had my first meal at seven o'clock on Monday, right? Because I woke up at six, I'm eating by seven. From seven o'clock, that is where my two to three hours begins. So that means I'm gonna have another meal by 9 a.m. And I'm more on the two hour side more than anything else. Sometimes I flirt around with the two and a half, but I'm usually more on that two hour side just because my metabolism is so high. I have to eat a little bit more frequent and based off the goals that I'm setting for myself. Now, if you have a more shapely body type and you're like, my metabolism doesn't burn as fast, then you might be more on the side of three, two and a half to three hours, okay? Me, I'm on the side of two on my active days. For more shapely, lower half women, you might be more on the side of two and a half to three hours on your active days, okay? So from that seven o'clock time frame for me, two hours for me is nine. Then I have something else uh, around 11. Then again, I'm here at, what is that? One, three, five, seven. So when I count that down, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven meals per day for me, okay? That's considering my lifestyle, because I know I'm active, that's considering my workouts, that's considering my body type, all right? Now, again, if you are more shapely on the lower half, meaning you have, you carry more weight down bottom than you do up top, you might want to go around every two and a half to three hours for your consistency of eating. And we'll talk about what those meals look like. So, if your schedule looked like mine, you woke up at six and that first meal was at seven, then yours might look like around 9.30 or 10, and then two and a half to three hours from there, two and a half to three hours from there, so on and so on, okay? So everybody's is gonna look different. My Monday, my Wednesday, my Thursday, all look the same because my schedule is relatively the same for those days. So I'm eating easily seven meals. And I know it might sound like you're eating seven meals a day, but I consider my snacks a meal as well. It's just a small meal. So one of those meals might be I'm having a protein shake. One of those small meals might be I'm having a green smoothie. One of those small meals might be I'm having a side salad with some roasted vegetables and a half of a uh, sweet potato. There might be a meal for me. Another one of these meals might be I'm having uh, my scrambled, uh, my egg scramble, my egg white scramble where I put my spinach, I got my onions, I got my peppers, I got my mushrooms. And then on top of that, I got like maybe a half of a waffle that I'm going to eat. Then I got my water and I got the remaining of my protein shake that I forgot to have during my first workout. So it's going to look different for everybody, but your times are your times. So on whatever days that are pretty much consistent, they pretty much look the same, you want to put, make sure you have those time frames all the way there, okay? So if you have yours, you're good to go, give me a thumbs up, wave or something. If you're good to go on all of the days that you actually work out and your days are pretty much consistent, just give me a thumbs up, give me something, let me know you on point, okay? 
Okay. All right. All right. All right. Questions before I move forward. Because I'm about to get even more detailed. I know y'all gonna be like, huh? Okay. <laughs> no questions yet. Perfect. So let's back it up. So right now you should have the days that you work out, you should have your schedule all set. You should have that for every single day. You should have the time that you're waking up and you should also have the time that you begin your workouts on your workout days. You should have that first meal of the day for all of your days. And this is what I want to ask you next. At the bottom of your day or at the bottom of your notes or what have you, what I want you to do is put the time that you go to bed or the time you should be in bed, okay? Put the time that you should be in bed. <laughs> I saw that face, test. <laughs> put the time that you actually should be in bed. So if we're having one of our check-in sessions and I'm saying, hey, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that you're getting at least seven hours of sleep. Do the math, carry the one. What time should you be in bed? So I know that my behind need to be in the bed no later than 11 o'clock. But sometimes I get to watching them shows and it get good and I watch a good little movie and I'm like, oh, and I know I'm falling asleep on the couch anyway, but I just try to peel my eyelids back and these some big old eyes. I try to peel them back just to watch that last little bit that I know I'm going to go to sleep on instead of carrying my behind the bed. I know that I need to be more disciplined with that. I do need to be in the bed at 11 o'clock p.m. Okay. Write down the time that you need to be in the bed every single night. And while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about the importance of getting enough rest. Now, y'all know I love using car analogies. You can't, you cannot, cannot, cannot take your nice Bentley Range Rover Mercedes beautiful body car. You know, the car is the body. You can't drive up and down 85, up and down 95, all the way over here, all the way over there, all day long. And sure, you might be putting in that good old premium gas, meaning you're eating right. You might be doing everything right, but you running your car and running it and running it and running it and running it and running it. And you never turn your car off or you never turn it off so that it gets the, the recovery time that it needs, or it can just rest the engine, rest your engine. A lot of us are not resting our engine, we're not. So then we wake up and we're you know eating the right types of foods that we're doing and we're doing everything right, except getting enough rest. Our body does not recover the way that it needs to. It does not repair the way that it needs to. I don't care how many salads you eat, you're not gonna get those results from eating all the salads in the world than what you would get in having proper rest. The body just does not work that way. What I want us to begin to do more is prioritizing your rest. We don't do it enough, especially us as women, we do not do it enough. We're too busy tightening up our superhero cape at the end of the day, making sure the house look like this, making sure we, oh, I got to give a little time to myself. So let me watch my little movie. Oh, let me talk to my girlfriend for a little bit longer, whatever, whatever. Oh, my man, we doing this, that, and the third. Oh, you know, I'm just going to stay up on my phone a little bit longer, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, you have to learn to turn it off. If you don't, and you continue to bid and gamble with your rest, you're going to hit a hard plateau. You're going to hit a very, very hard plateau. And there's not going to be anything that I can do. I can't coach you out of that if you're not giving yourself that rest that you need, okay? Without rest, again, I said it before and I'm going to say it again. Our bodies are meant and built to survive. That's it. They're not built to lose. They're not built to gain. They're not built to maintain. They are built to survive. So if you do not give yourself that proper rest, that proper recovery for resting and whatnot, go ahead and hang it up. You got to get out of that habit. So I had you write down the times of every single night that you need to be going to bed. I do want you to do your best to honor that at least within a 30 minute time frame. So for me, if my goal is by 11 o'clock, I know by 11 p 11 30 p.m. Now I'm out here slaw. Now I'm just out here really cutting the fool. And I'm gonna be upset with myself when I'm like, well, how come I just can't 
I'm just trying to get break this one number. How come I just can't break this one number? Well, you keep playing around at night. That's your fault. I don't know. I don't know. And that's just the hard conversation you'll have to have with yourself. The golden rule at night is you want to cut off your eating within three hours of you going to bed, okay? Within three hours of you going to bed. So for me, if mine is at 11 o'clock, I have to be, I have to finish up my last meal, 8.30, 9 o'clock, that's it for me. That is it. I have to cut it off. It's null and void. It's done for me. And the reason why mine is 839 is because, again, my metabolism is so high. It is so very high that I can be moving, 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 and I'm up. It's uh, what 1030. I might get hungry again. <laughs> I mean, I, and I, I'm not doing anything. But then again, it's the importance of knowing your body. Also, knowing your habits. If you're someone who like to kick up and you're watching TV with your man or you're watching with your kids and the next thing you know, somebody around in the pantry and they cooking, making some popcorn, that popcorn smelling good and it's 1030, you know, good and daggone well, you don't need to be eating nothing that late. What you gonna do? You're gonna go, try, you're gonna eat some of that popcorn. You're gonna say, let me, let me just get a little bit. Let me get a little handful. Let me just get, let me get. I'm gonna say, move them hands out the way. That's what I'm going to do. I want you to think about me. Slapping that hand down. No, 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 no. You have to learn how to go ahead and put in the work earlier on so that later on down the road, you don't have as many issues. And what that looks like is go ahead and go to bed. Another trick that you can do is go ahead and make some bedtime tea. Something that doesn't have any caffeine in it, but something, sometimes we just want to sip on something. Sometimes we just want a little munch, a little something. What you can do with your um, herbal tea, something that will be really good for the evening, take that, consume that, and after that, say, nope, let me cut it off. You have to know when to cut it off. So your cutoff time is definitely three hours prior to you going to bed, especially because think about it. I have you on a what, two and a half to three hour time frame of eating every meal throughout the day, right? You got to cut it off before you get hungry again, because we're training your body. We're training your body for this. We're training your body for that consistency. We also have to train your body at that time to cut it off so that when you do wake up in the morning and you have to break your fast with that very first meal, your body knows what to do. It knows how to perform. Okay. So bedtime Mine is 11 p.m. I'm putting my last meal. My last meal for me is at eight o'clock. I don't eat past eight, okay? So your dinner, whatever that time frame is, that three hours before you go to bed, that is your very last meal of the day. Go ahead and write what your last meal of the day is. So you should see your bedtime here you should see your last meal right there above it, okay? So bedtime here, last meal right there above it, okay? Go ahead and do that for every single day, every single day, every single day. And while you're doing that, I'll tell you what my Monday is looking like because you'll see that you might have to do some adjusting. Some of these times, you know, you're like, Reagan, well, you tell me every two to three hours, but then you tell me this, and then you tell me that, and now my times are overlapping. That might happen, but again, you'll have to adjust with what works with your schedule and say, okay, I'll give you an example. If I'm waking up at six, my first meal is at seven, nine, 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m. My cutoff time is 8 p.m. because I'm supposed to be in the bed by 11, right? I have a little gap in time right there. I'm going to take the later time for me because I know that my metabolism is just super high. So I'm going to take that eight o'clock time frame. So now what my meal schedule looks like is seven, nine, 11, one, three, five, and eight. So that two hours is now a three hour time frame for me. Again, I gave myself a good two and a half to three, especially on my active days, okay? You'll have to kind of maneuver some things around too to make sure that your schedule fits for you, okay? It's all about what your schedule works for you. 
And for all of these numbers or these times that you have, you always have a 30 minute gap. You always have kind of like a 30 minute time frame. So what that looks like, say you have a 9 a.m. meeting that you're, you know, you're supposed to be on Zoom for and you don't want to be munching and you're eating or whatever. You can either have it before your meeting or you can have it after your meeting. OK, so you have that 30 minute gap on both ends both before 9 a.m. or after 9 a.m., especially if it's right there on the spot as to whenever you're supposed to eat something, you have something that you're supposed to do, either eat before or eat right afterwards, okay? Just so that your body doesn't fall into that, that state of just hunger. You do not want to get hungry. At the top of your paper, put, do not get hungry, okay? Do not get hungry, if you break that rule, you just set yourself back. Do not get hungry. That doesn't mean walk around stuffed all day, but what it does mean is that you're not gonna send your body into super survival mode, okay? You don't want your body to be in survival mode. You should walk around the day feeling satisfied. Like, oh, you know, if someone says, hey, you wanna grab a bite to eat? Huh? Look at the time. I can eat, you know, all right, cool. That's totally fine. And you'll also learn to know what you can eat. If you just had lunch at 11 and a homegirl hit you up and say, let's go to lunch at 12, you could probably go to lunch with them, but you don't need to have a big lunch. You know what I mean? You probably need to have, oh, what they got? They got a little small side salad. Okay, cool. Or matter of fact, oh, what is this? They got like a little side of vegetables. Okay, cool. Let me just eat that, you know, for the sake of it. It's fine. Vegetables are like free calories. Eat them. They're great for you. Why not? So you have your times. Every day, what I want you to do for those days that you're not active and you're not moving around as much, go ahead and follow that same schedule. Make sure that you have those time frames the way they need to be and make sure you also have your cutoff time. So right now, if your bedtime is, I don't know, 10 o'clock, carry to one. What's three hours before then? Make sure you're cutting it off. Same thing with every other day. Go ahead and write that down. If you don't already have that down, and if there are any questions, because some of us have a very different um, workout schedule and I'm waiting on this question to be asked, go ahead and ask it now. If you have a very different workout schedule, because remember, I had some other rules about when you should eat. I mean, when you should work out around your eating and that's 30 minutes before your workout. And you also, bonus, have a 30 minute time frame after your workout. And that gets us into the pre and post workout meals. Y'all come off mute, ask me some questions. Ask me some questions. Because if not, I'm gonna keep rolling. Okay. So you're saying we should be doing a post workout meal too? Or can it be like a protein shake or something? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about post workout meals. Because Nine times out of 10, your post-workout meal or your pre-workout meal is going to fall around within those time frames that you already have, right? Or it should. And if it's not, that's when it's like, okay, let's take some adjusting. For your pre-workout meal, if you're supposed to have it about 30 minutes, let's throw a monkey wrench in there. I'm going to use myself as an example. Say I do my workout around 12 o'clock, like in the middle of the day. I just randomly want to do a workout in the middle of the day, one day. What does that look like? So if I know that I'm getting up at six, then seven, nine, 11, and I decide to do a 12 o'clock workout, I already have a meal planned for 11 and I have a meal planned for one. I'm okay. I'm actually okay with that. What some people do is you get further and further into your workouts and you're burning more and more calories and whatnot, and you're seeing at the end of the day, you're still not zeroing out. You probably do need to put something very small pre and post right there around that workout to cushion your workout, okay? And what that can look like is a protein shake. It can. You can consume half of it before your workout, half of it after your workout, or you can consume half of it with your meal that you already have planned before and the other half with your meal that you already have planned afterwards. What that does, it gives your workout that cushion that it needs so that your body, you haven't burnt off. You don't wanna be burning off carbs. 
you want to burn fat, okay? You want to use carbs to help you burn off the body fat, okay? That's the way that it works. That's the way that your body works. Sometimes when you're looking at, you know, what you burned, what you did and stuff, you'll see where um, your heart rate was here, your body fat did this, um, you burnt all these calories and it's like, well, what does, what type of calories did I burn? You know, cause you can burn a whole bunch of calories and burnt nothing but carbs or burnt nothing but, you know, muscle weight. Did you really do what you needed to do? You know what I mean? Did you have what you needed in your diet to help cushion you so that your workout could utilize the right type of nutrients to provide the results that you're looking for? That would be the whole point of cushioning your workout or making sure that you have the right type of food in your diet so that when you do get to burning these large, large, you know, calories or whatever after these crazy workouts and whatnot, you're yielding the results that you're looking for. So you can cushion with having a half of a protein shake pre and the other half post or moving your meals closer to those workouts so that your body utilizes the workouts more effectively. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't challenge me, ask me, ask me, ask me. Nope, I don't get it. Make it make sense. Ask. If that makes sense to you, go ahead and put a three in the chat. If it does make sense, if what I said makes sense about how to use your pre and post workout meals, with those meals that you already have planned around workouts, whether it's in the beginning of the day or whether it's at the end of the day, whatever your schedule looks like, if it makes sense, go ahead and put a three in the chat. If it does not ask, what question do I need to answer so that it does make more sense to you? And you can make it more relative to your life so I can answer it exactly. If it makes sense, a three. If it doesn't make sense, come off mute and ask, or you can even throw your question in the chat either way. So we got our pre and post workout. Yes, I'm sorry. Right. Hello? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Well, I know when we had this discussion, I know you was telling me I need to also increase my proteins too. Mm -hmm. When I do the double workouts. Okay. Because at one point I wasn't getting enough protein. So just to share that with everyone, I know we were trying to watch how much we consume, but I think I started doing better when I did increase my proteins to meet the amount in fit my fitness path. Mm, I love it. Yes, yes, yes. That was Jada, right? Correct. Yes. And facts only. When you, what we forego eating enough of is our protein. I don't know. And it's so consistent across the board. We don't eat enough. We don't consume enough protein. So when we do all these cardio-based exercises or when we're just doing like lots of working out amongst natural living, just natural things that we have going on, we end up, we already don't consume enough and then we use more than what we actually have. So it's almost like looking at your bank account and you got bills coming out and your account is still in them zeros. This is in the negatives. This is just down in those negatives your body does that whenever it comes to protein, especially with the type of workouts that we're doing, you gotta have that protein. It has to be sufficient enough. It absolutely has to, it's a must. Um, someone's biggest challenge now is workout time since their workout schedule, since the work schedule, mm, schedule has changed. If your schedule has changed, a lot of people have because they're going back into school. Some companies are allowing people or making individuals come back into the office more or what have you adjust. You take, you take a, a time to really understand, well, what is this going to look like? And every week you guys might be different. Um, I know a lot of you just went back in what last week or something like that. And it was like, I don't know what to expect this week. Honestly, I didn't have any expectations because I don't know, you know, you sometimes have to go through it and say, okay, I'm gonna come in as equipped and prepared as possible, but let me see. Some of you in our check-ins, I said, take notes, take notes as to what's going on, figure out what the schedule is going to be. So then we can prepare your schedule for your schedule. Okay. <laughs> and if you're just kind of in that, that shifty, that, that, I don't know, that shift, you're just going through the shift. I would say, hold tight. 
don't overthink it. Don't put more on your schedule than what you actually need at this moment. Just think about eating consistently, making sure that you have enough meals prepared. You might have meetings that come out in the middle of the, the day. We can't help that at this moment, but what we can do is make sure we have a little something, something to little grab and go in our little lunch pail and we can prepare ourselves that way. But right now, I would say if that is your challenge, the, your work schedule, because you're in a shift right now, figure out what it is going to be. And that may take a week. It may take two weeks. Figure out what it's going to be. Stay on point as much as possible around this, this period of time and then move on with the plan. You know, don't say, well, I don't know when it's going to get better. You keep shooting your shot. Keep throwing stuff until it sticks. You know what I mean? You just, that's what it's all about. And that's going to be life. That is period. This whole lifestyle change is going to take a lifestyle of work. We say this every week and I mean it. So, but we can talk offline. If I did not answer your question there, we'll definitely talk all offline so we can give you a plan um, that will work until it doesn't work. And then we'll find another plan to work. Okay. So boom, any other questions before we finish up with our schedule, what it needs to look like? Okay, fantastic. So a quick recap, quick, quick, quick recap. This is what your day needs to look like. These are your basic rules to follow. And you wrote these things down. It may not look like this next week. It's okay. That's what Reset Sunday is for. First thing, you need to eat something within an hour of you waking up, period. Second thing, you need to put yourself on a time schedule, either set it in your phone or you need to write it down. You either need to be eating every two to three hours if you are a super active person, if you're not extremely active and every day might look different, three to four, okay? So everybody's meal count is gonna look different on each day. It might be different and that's okay. What you also need to be reminded of is your cutoff period. Your cutoff period needs to be roughly three hours before you go to bed you also need to go to bed, okay? Let's go to bed. I want you to work on going to bed, prioritizing your rest. Last point that we covered is your pre and post workout meal time frame: 30 minutes pre-workout, 30 minutes post-workout. Let's start cushioning our workouts to provide ourselves with the right type of caloric intake we need to yield the results we're looking for. That's all it's about. You don't want to do a workout and you starving and your body not working, you pumping and your heart rate up and everything whole time. You don't have the right type of nutrients in there to support that workout. That's when you're chasing your tail. OK, so um, I hope you were able to cover every single day of what those times look like. What we'll cover next time is what those meals need to look like at each of those times. OK, so in the meantime, between time, what I want you to do is make sure you set those times up. Try to adhere by those times as close as possible. Take notes where you're like, yeah, Reagan, I'm just not hungry around that time. You might not be burning much, as much at that time. Or yeah, Reagan, I'm getting super hungry prior to the time that you recommended. Okay, well, you might be burning more at that time or you might need to consume more, okay? Keep tracking in the meantime, between time. And of course, if you have any questions, y'all know how to reach me, okay? Any questions? How do you get rid of a fupa? <laughs> oh, how do we get rid of that? By following what I'm saying. I know you was about to say that. <laughs> you already know. No, seriously, you get rid of that lower area. It is, it is very tough. That is a very stubborn area. So, you know, and I'm going to use you as an example, Sean. A couple of months ago, whenever, mm, it's been almost a year now. Mm, I'm gonna say a couple months just for the sake of the, the, the story. Um, so a couple months ago, whenever we started looking at your, um, we started looking at your body fat a little bit more detailed and stuff. That is why, that is why. Anytime we do your measurements at that waistline, your waistline measurements right there at the belly button, feet standing together, go around the circumference of your waist at the belly button. That right there, and you know, we've been doing this for years at this point in time. 
If that number is not going down, that waistline measurement is not going down, you're not doing something correctly. You can be running 10 plus miles per day and that same little area might be the same size. I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it on people so many times. I've seen it on men, I've seen it on women. That is a stubborn area and sometimes we go about it with trying to do all this crazy cardio thinking that's gonna happen when really you gotta get targeted in the kitchen. That is where that FUPA area is going to go down. That's the way. You can crunch until the cows come home. You can crunch until you get, I don't know, frogs and all sorts of cramps in your core. It ain't gonna fix the problem until you fix what's going on in that kitchen, okay? So it goes back to tracking. Are you hitting your numbers? Are you going over? Do we need to adjust? Are you going over in sugar? Are you going over in sodium? Are you hitting your carbohydrate intake? Are you going over in carbs? What type of carbs are you eating? Are you eating more refined carbs than you are complex carbs? Are you getting enough protein? Are you overeating in protein? Are you eating red meat to the point that it's just processing so slow that you're not seeing no movement in there? You didn't do about 10 workouts this week. Are you drinking red wine? Red wine to the point that that sweet, that sugar, even though you're fine on your sugar intake, but the fat that you had that wine or you're having some type of condiments throughout the week that it's just storing and it's building up and your body's holding on to it, becoming resistant to it being released. That is when you get super intricate into what it is that you're eating and say, you know what, I can't, I can't give myself that much grace because I'm not seeing the results I'm looking for. And that is usually when people are, they get pissed. They get mad with themselves because they're not seeing what they feel they should be seeing because they're trying to hold on to just that one little piece of cheese that they know I didn't say it cut back on. We'll talk about it. I feel like that was the end of my little Oprah talk or something like that. <laughs> I'm glad y'all enjoyed uh, Reset Sunday. Y'all know we are at it again on next Sunday, one o'clock. Thank you.